military budget cuts in this time of economic austerity require the North Atlantic Treaty Organization to do more with less. For this reason, NATO leaders already agreed at the Lisbon summit in 2010 to far-reaching reforms of the NATO command structure. Here in Lisbon, we will take forward fundamental reform of the NATO command structure, the NATO agencies and our headquarters uh, in Brussels. Even though NATO is 61 years old, we will slim down, speed up and become more flexible. But making NATO more affordable is not the only reason triggering these extensive reforms. The main reason is in fact to uh, draw the, the lessons of past operations and to induce uh, efficiency uh, benefits um, by reducing the, the command structure, of course, but also by uh, enhancing its deployability and by shortening the, the readiness times with which it can be brought to bear on a conflict situation. The need for a leaner and more deployable command structure means a significant reduction in the number of military headquarters and a manpower saving of about 30%. The reform of the NATO command structure that is underway currently will see the number of military headquarters of NATO go down from 11 to 7. Of these, two will be strategic level command headquarters, one for operations in Belgium, one for transformation in Virginia in the United States. There will be two joint force headquarters to lead expeditionary operations up to a major joint operation involving maritime, land and air forces. There will finally be three single service headquarters for land, air and maritime forces, including for air defense and ballistic missile defense. The new structure not only simplifies command arrangements for NATO operations, but is also more efficient. We come from a concept where we physically had to deploy personnel into a theater. Um, with information technology uh, and communications that are enhancing uh, satellite communications and all, all the forms of communications. Uh, it, it, is now, it is now possible to apply command and control without physically having to move people into the theater and also put them in harm's way. By doing so, that also allows to, to downsize it um, and, and, and make it more affordable. Whereas NATO's political decision-making bodies are based in Brussels, Belgium, the NATO military command structure is in charge of planning and carrying out operations and missions. So the alliance's military component consists of all the headquarters and operational centers in the different allied countries. Remember, in, in the Cold War, we had about 25,000 uh, uh, functions devoted to command and control. We, have slimmed, we had slimmed that down to about 13,000. And it is now uh, re-reformed, re-tailored, uh, re redesigned to about 8,800 uh, uh, personnel functions, of which, in fact, 2,000 will then be devoted to uh, command and control for the AWACS and the future project for LR and transfer violence. This is not the first restructuring in the history of NATO. Since its creation in 1951, the command structure has undergone many reorganizations, with the greatest number occurring since the end of the Cold War. Two reforms took place in the 1990s and, another, and a further two reforms have been happening uh, over the last decade. And, and we have seen the number of headquarters go down from more than 60 uh, at the end of the Cold War to now going down to seven uh, in the latest reform. And I think it is a, is a fairly small uh, command structure in consideration uh, uh, of uh, the, the fairly large establishments that constitute the 28 members of NATO. But still, uh, many people see it as a bulky organization. No, I don't think it is a proper view of the reality of NATO. If you take NATO headquarters, uh, the various uh, military headquarters, and the NATO agencies, it, it is uh, a, a total body of, of, of people that is probably less than uh, uh, 15,000 uh, compared to the population uh, of the alliance, uh, which is 
uh, not far from uh, about a billion. Uh, it is not uh, a, a large number. It's not a, a bulky organization. It actually has been transforming all the all the way from the start of the 1990s at the end of the Cold War uh, to ensure that it remains efficient and effective. The current reform of the command structure is a fundamental reorganization. At the same time, the Alliance's level of ambition stays the same. And not only does NATO's core mission of defending the nations of the Alliance remain, new threats like terrorism, weapons of mass destruction and dictatorial regimes are also growing. It is for this reason that the Alliance is implementing the reorganization while not sacrificing its capabilities. The ongoing operations have to be taken care of during this transition period from one command structure to another. Uh, as you will know, there is a substantial reduction in manning, about 30%, uh, which means that you have, and we are closing a substantial number of installations, which implies that you both have to move people uh, and you have to move from an old structure which still has to be uh, workable to a new structure which is going to grow in capacity. And this change over needs to be regulated carefully and we are very much focused on the whole of that process. Political events with far-reaching consequences such as the end of the Cold War and military operations such as ISAF in Afghanistan do trigger extensive reforms. To keep pace with all these changes and future challenges, NATO's military command structure and way of doing business will constantly keep evolving. I'm Karsten Reniers, reporting for the NATO Channel.